All right, what I got here is a battery load tester, okay? Now, this load tester has a scale on it. And on this scale over here is 6 volt batteries, and over here is 12 volt. This is what we're going to be testing today. So now, on this scale, if you notice, there's a thing here that says 1,800, 600, and 400. Now, this is in relationship to what your cold cranking amp to your battery is. So now I want to go to my battery first of all, and I want to see, this one says it's a 750 cold cranking amp battery. So I'm going to use the 800 cold cranking amp scale. Now if it was below 20 degrees out, I would step that down one scale. Instead of using the 800, I would go to 600, okay? So whatever it is, your cold cranking amps, when you go to the scale below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, you want to step it down one scale. Inside this um, battery tester is something similar to what an electric heater would have in it. So the idea is when you hit the load test button, it puts a big draw on the battery, and this is how you, this is what lets you test the battery. Now, you want to note, it's 12 volts here. Okay, just a little over 12 volts. That's good. If you hook it up and don't do nothing, and it's down to 11 or so, then you're already low to start with. The other thing I want to tell you is if your battery was dead, or you've been driving the car, you can get a different reading after you've charged it. So, if your battery's dead and you just charged your battery, the ideal thing is to wait 12 to 24 hours before you do this because it'll put what I call like a flash charge in there and then when you get a flash charge you'll get an inaccurate reading so I'm at the 12 now when I hit this load test button what I'm going to be looking for is this 800 scale I do not want the needle to drop below the green on the 800 scale if it's in the yellow, it means the battery's weak, and I need to think about replacing this if it's properly charged and been setting long enough. Okay. When you do the load test, you're also going to come up here, and you're going to see what the bolts are on it. So, if I do this load test, wherever this needle is, I also want to note what the voltage is, because we're going to use that later. Now, you don't want to hit this load test button, like I say, for more than 10 seconds at a time. So, I'm going to hit it. And I'm just a little below 11 volts, and I'm right on the edge of the 800 on the green scale. So, this battery passed its first initial test. Now, the second thing I can do with this is I can do something like a simulated draw test of the starter. So, now this is where we're going to need that scale. Because whatever your voltage is up here that you see on the load test of the battery if it's a 3.0 liter motor or bigger when you're cranking the starter you're going to want to be within one volt of that so just say I had 11 volts there when I crank this motor I don't want to see less than 10 volts now if you're having a problem I'm not going to do that for this demonstration but in reality you should disable the ignition system so that way your vehicle can crank longer and it'll be easier for you to read this and see what your actual um, thing is <clears throat> now I was just below 11 volts okay so now whenever this motor is cranked crank it see now as it was cranking you'll get the little peak but when it was cranking I was just at around 10 volts okay so that's within my one volt limit okay now like I said 3.0 liter and above the rule of thumb is you want to be no less than one volt lower than what your draw test was on the battery now say you have a 2 liter motor okay it doesn't take as much to crank that motor over so if I have a 2 liter motor I need to step that up to only a half a volt less so in this case if this was a 2 liter motor um, and it was say at 11 volts on my draw test when I load tested the battery then that means I don't want to be less than 10 and a half volts when I'm cranking. Okay the other thing I can do here is I can do like a simulated um, alternator test okay now to do this you're going to want to start the vehicle and they suggest you do it at a higher idle of around 1000 to 1200 rpm now this motor is cold so it's automatically going to do that 
Now the thing I want to try to look for here is there's a scale over here. Now if I'm in this scale and the car is running, if I'm in the red below the 14, that means that my battery is not charging properly and the alternator may be failing me. If I'm over here in the red above the 15, that means that it's overcharging. And overcharging is just as bad on a battery as undercharging. It'll burn your batteries up. Now, usually a lot of times the case for that will be a regulator. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them start the car up. Okay? But whenever I have them start the car up, I'm going to be looking in this scale right here. And I want this needle to be somewhere in the green. Okay? And once I get it started up and see where it's at in the green, then I'm going to have them turn the heater on and the headlights, and you can turn whatever accessories that you want on, and it needs to stay in this green area. Okay? So go ahead and start it. Okay, now, we're right here in the good. Okay? We're just a little over 14 volts, about 14.4, 14.5. Okay, we're right there. Now, go ahead and turn the heater and the lights on. You'll notice the needle bounces whenever it does, then the regulator picks up, and I'm still in the good zone. So that's telling me that the charging system on this is working good. Okay, so like I say, if you was below that, you would be not charging. If you're above this, you're overcharging. And after you start it, like I say, you want to be in the green area, and you also want to stay in that green area whenever you turn some accessories on. So there you kind of have it.